Hello, fellow truth seekers. This is Barbara Jean. <laughs> this is take two. Uh, I've got so much to say. It so much that I I I I got long winded in my last video. I went forty five minutes trying to say something, and I just I had to start over again. So hopefully, I can kind of compress what I'm saying now that I've said it once. <laughs> oh. I find it so hard to make videos because I've got so much going on in my head that uh, it's really hard to get it all out. And I just want to see, I, I'm tr I've am i got something going on that I'm thinking that this Christmas is very, very special. Very, very, very special Christmas this year. That's what I was trying to say in my last video. What the Lord is showing me, that there is a connection between this Christmas and what's been going on. Uh, this Christmas is a Christmas of freedom. Now you, you you saw my last video where I showed you my little Christmas tree. Let's see if I can find it again. This is um. I showed you this one here. This is my little Christmas tree. My little nativity scene is on the t on the top there. You can see it there. There's my little Christmas tree. That's before I put my ornaments on. It's got all the colors of the rainbow on it. It's not very tall. It's only about three, four feet, three, four feet, four feet, four feet tall. Um. Anyway, it has all the colors of the rainbow on it, including orange and red and yellow and green. Oh, it's got all of them. And uh, anyway, this is my tree with my ornaments on it. Let me see if you can see it there. There's all my ornaments on the tree. I didn't. I decided to leave the icicles off. I put all my hearts on. I just sit at my. I just sit. This little close up. I just sit at my. In my chair and I just admire my tree. <laughs> I just. I just admire it all. I just have. I just sit there and I, it just makes me so happy. It's like oh. I just sit there and I can just now I'm just sitting over here looking at it, thinking how beautiful it is. Oh, it just makes me happy. Happy, happy. Anyway, getting back to what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, so anyway, there is a, this Christmas is a special Christmas. Very, very, very special Christmas. I want you to keep in mind that this year, no, I don't know that much about it, but this year there is a special conjunction, star conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. And I believe Jupiter, I don't know that much, but I, from what I'm hearing, that Jupiter and Saturn are conjuncting, conjuncting, and it's going to look like one massive star, but also Jupiter is over, overtaking Saturn. Jupiter is going to overtake Saturn. Jupiter is the king planet, and Saturn represents Satan. Okay. The so these two stars, um, are conjuncting, but but Jupiter overtakes Saturn. Jupiter is overtaking Saturn. So. Um, they say this is a very special conjunction, and I believe it. I believe that something's going on. Now, also interesting, I just listened to a video yesterday um, on a channel. Um, I'm just going to tell you what it is. I don't know how to link things, so I'm very illiterate when it comes to computers and stuff. I can just do very, very basic stuff. Trey Smith, and his channel is Trey Smith, it's spelled T-E-T-R-E-Y, Trey, Trey Smith, and Smith is spelled like Smith, S-M-I-T-H, Smith, Trey Smith, that's the name of his channel. Anyway, he just put out a, a, most of the time when I listen to his videos, I have no idea what he's talking about, really, seriously. Um, <clears throat> but this particular video, I really, really, really appreciated, and it's called Kim Clement, Letter You Want to Hear. Kim Clement, letter you want to hear. Kim Clement, of course, was a prophet who just died a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, three or four years ago, I, remember, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, he prophesied a lot of amazing things. It, it really, He's really worth listening to. Um, but anyway, he wrote a letter. Kim Clement, letter you want to hear. And it's about uh, this time that we're living in. And it's about Christmas, that there was going to be a special Christmas. And this, I think he wrote the letter in 2006. 
2006, 2007, somewhere in there, he wrote this letter. And it's about a very special Christmas that was coming up. Which I think is fascinating. Okay, so anyway, I, I would really recommend you watch his video. And uh, like I said, most of his videos I don't understand. But this one was pretty good because he was reading a letter. <clears throat> like Kim Clement, really, really worth listening to. So anyway, all that to say, and I think that this Christmas has to do with, it really has to do with freedom. And I remember my, the last word I, the Lord gave me was about just Nasara Jasara. And the word he, if I can remember correctly, he said, uh, prepare yourselves for Nasara Jasara. Prepare yourselves for Nasara Jasara. Prepare your hearts for Nasara Jasara. Prepare your hearts for freedom. And that was the day, uh, the the morning of uh, when I was, I had already put up my Christmas tree. It was my, my twin sister came down, Beverly came down. And uh, she helped me put my tree up and put my strings and lights on. Now she's, it's just, it's funny because there, every year I was like, are you going to, she comes down, are you going to put your Christmas tree? You're going to put up your Christmas tree? And I was like, oh, I don't know. I'm not really in the mood. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know. I don't know. And then she says, she was, you have to put up your Christmas tree. You have to. She's always anxious that I put up my Christmas tree. She always tells me how romantic it looks with all the little hearts that I put on my tree. Anyway, interestingly, uh, Beverly, <coughs> in my dreams, represents the Church of Pergamos. The paganistic church. She's, in my dreams, she represents this church, the, pagan, the per Church of Pergamos. And, and those people who have seen my little figurines, this is the Church of Pergamos in my little figurine collection that I have seven of. And there's my, she's got her striped dress on. She's got holly in her hair. And the baby she's holding has got holly in his hands. And she's got green stockings and she's got a stripy dress, a pink and stripy dress that represents candy canes. And she's from the month of December. And uh, anyway, so isn't that an interesting coincidence? When, and those people who don't know my little figurines, this is the Church of Philadelphia. I don't, I didn't bring them all out today, but she's got, she's got her bag full of hearts. The baby's holding a heart, and she's got her bag full of hearts that she's got on her side there. She's got, always got her, she's going to pull out her hearts. <clears throat> so anyway, um. She's also my sister, Beverly. She's um, she's the one that has the friend that looks like Santa Claus. Okay, I think that was probably the reason why she she was attracted to the to him as a friend. It was because he looked like Santa Claus. It's serious. That's probably the reason why. She loves Christmas. She loves Christmas, and she like I said every year she's anxious that I put up my Christmas tree. And every year it's like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna put up my Christmas tree. Oh, I don't know. you gotta do it. You gotta do it. So interesting. <clears throat> I'm going to go somewhere with this, so stay with me. So, in my dream, uh, I want to go back and talk about um, my dream. Uh, the, the Joe Biden dream that I had um, before the election, in which, <clears throat> um, in the dream, I was in the dumpster. I was in the dumpster and I didn't know why I was in the dumpster, but now I know why in the dream I was in the dumpster was because they threw away the church's ballots. They were throwing away ballots. They were trying to steal the election. They were trying to steal the crown from Donald Trump who won the election fair and square. He won it. He won it, but they were, they're fraudulent and they're trying to steal his crown in the year of the coronavirus and they are trying to use it the coronavirus which they produced and, and manufactured and sent out into the world to steal the crown from the church to steal the crown from the church of philadelphia okay using the coronavirus isn't that very interesting but the bible says that we they that they will that we will defeat them and that they will we will make them come and worship at our he's going to make them come and worship at our feet so anyway, that's, there's that. But what's going back to that dream, there was a second part of the dream in which I was in the, 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 the dumpster and then I was protected from 
the um, the um, assassins of Joe Biden and his crew by the spirit of a woman in pink or the spirit in pink. She was the spirit of perfect love, who was protecting our hearts, protecting us through this period of time. Now, that spirit of perfect love, which casts out our fear, we were going to need that spirit. In the dream, the Lord was showing me, going back to that dream, she was, he was showing me, the Lord was showing me that the spirit of perfect love was going to protect us from the fear that they were going to try to gaslight us with. They were trying to um, um, make us believe a lie. And yet we, the spirit of perfect love was not going to allow us to be fooled into their trickery and their witchcraftery. Okay. So just saying that, isn't that interesting? That dream was very, very prophetic. And in the dream, the spirit of perfect love, which was in pink, came to me and protected me from his, Joe Biden's henchmen. I was led to a door and it was, I went to the door and there was a, a, a pink light in there, which was the spirit of perfect love. And when that happened, these butterflies left my stomach. This is really amazing. I'm trying to put this all together to you, for you. This is so amazing what the Lord showed me. And then there was a second part of the dream in which I went to my childhood home and my mother was sitting in the chair and she looked like four from the movie Divergent. In the movie Divergent, the spirit of Jezebel, which comes from the church of Pergamos, was trying to overcome the church of Thyatira, the works church, the heart church. This represents the heart, this represents the stomach. The church of Pergamos is this rung on the ladder, if you will. This church is the works church, is the faith church. And in the movie Divergent, the Jezebel in the story, her name is Janine, she uses the name John. Janine is a, is a form of the name John. John was the greatest prophet in the Bible. He is the greatest prophet. He wrote the book of Revelation. She calls herself a prophetess, which is what it says in the Bible here. The church of, of um, Thyatira talks about that Jezebel spirit who calls herself a prophetess. She, she teaches people, and this is what I wanted to find, this is really interesting. We know that the spirit of Jezebel comes from this group, which is about knowledge. It's about the stomach, which represents the knowledge of tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because when Eve ate the fruit, it lodged in her stomach. I've gone through all this before. The seeds got stuck in the stomach. In the dream, the Joe Biden dream, butterflies left my stomach when I went into this little room with a spirit of perfect love, which was this pink colored a light was in this room, and I felt the butterflies leave my stomach. Second part of the dream, I go into uh, my childhood home. My mother's sitting there looking like four in the movie Divergent, all drugged up and spaced out. And she says to me, I know what happened to Beverly. And then I said, what happened to Beverly? And then all of a sudden I felt butterflies. It physically, I felt it in my real body, not in my dream. I felt it in my body. I felt butterflies leaving my stomach. Okay? They left my stomach. And I believe that this dream has to do with the spirit of fear. It has to do with the, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. It has to do with um, being free from that Jezebel spirit. Um, I want to go back to the Church of Pergamos just to show you that the spirit of Jezebel comes from the Church of Pergamos, which is interesting. And if you remember the, that in the garden, what was Lee, Eve looking for? She was looking for knowledge. She was looking for wisdom. She was looking for food in the garden. Okay? And she ate it because it looked good. She ate the fruit and then she didn't, she wasn't a Jezebel because she was looking for those things. There was nothing wrong with Eve's desire for food. Food is natural. Okay. To eat is natural. It was not a wrong desire for food. It's not a wrong desire for knowledge. It's not a wrong desire for wisdom. Okay. It's not wrong to, to admire beautiful things. None of those things are evil in themselves, but she went to the wrong source. That was what the evil was. And the Jezebel does the same thing. She goes to the wrong source. 
She becomes a witch. She goes to the wrong source for her knowledge. She goes to the wrong source for her wisdom. She goes to the wrong source for her food. Okay. Now I want you to see, I'll show you, prove to you that the Jezebel comes from this church. Okay. The church of Pergamos. When you go to the church of Pergamos, it says it's about food. We know I've already proven it to you. It's about food and about eating. Um, I know thy works where thou dwellest, even where Satan, Satan's seed is. So the seed of Satan is in the stomach for the woman. The seed of Satan is in the stomach for the woman. And, and thou holdest fast my name, and has not denied my faith. Even in those days where an antipas, an antipas is a word that we use for an appetizer, antipasto. It's the same word, antipas, antipasto. Where an antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Where does Satan dwelleth? In the stomach. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast them that hold the doctrines of Balaam, who taught Balaam, Balak to stumble, cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. That's important. They also have the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Now, the Lord told me years ago when I asked him, what about the Nicolaitans? What does that mean? The Lord said, think Santa Claus. That was before all this happened, before I came on YouTube, before I started this whole study. The Lord told me years ago, many, many years ago, thank Santa Claus. Okay? My sister's best friend looks like Santa Claus. My sister Beverly, her best friend looks like Santa Claus. Okay? So, then he says, so, and then this is about food, and he talks about who, those who overcome, will he give to eat of hidden manna, a hidden bread, um, and a white stone, and a, a new, and a, and a, in the new, and then in the stone, stone a new name which no man knows save he that receives it. So this spirit um, has false doctrine and also has um, tell us um, eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit fornication. Okay. Now we go to the next church, the church of uh, excuse me, same chapter two is the next church is the church of Thyatira. Okay, here we go, church of Thyatira right here. It has to do with the heart. It has to do with works. And this is the only church that the Lord mentions the heart in. And he mentions works several times. But then he also mentions uh, Jezebel. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest, thou, you put up with that woman Jezebel, which calls herself a prophetess. In the movie Divergent, she, her name was Janine, which of course is a feminine form of John. To teach and seduce my servants to what? Commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. Well, what do you know? Jezebel comes from this group. But she wants to overcome this group. Now, this is really interesting. So I was thinking about this. This, this, this is really a tale of two trees. Christmas is about a tree. I was thinking about how this pagan holiday became a Christian holiday and how this pagan holiday is about a tree. They celebrate a tree. Now here's my little figurine and she's got a holly tree, holly leaves in her hair. And she's got holly leaves in her hair and the baby's holding a holly leaf. It is the darkest time of the year and it's about a tree. What tree do the pagans celebrate? Is it possible that this pagan holiday that later became Christmas was the holiday that the pagans celebrated because it was the day or the time of the season, the darkest time in the year in the Northern Hemisphere, that Adam and Eve fell and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Think about this for a second. Could it be that that's why it was a pagan holiday in the first place? That it was the time that Satan celebrates the fall of man when Adam and Eve ate from the, tr the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Isn't that interesting? Your darkest time of the year, the winter solstice, and it's about a tree. Whew. 
Now, this is really interesting because my sister, my, my sister whom I talk to the phone all the time, she represents this church in my dreams. Although I don't dream about it very often. I mostly just speak to her um, right here. Um, anyway, I, she said to me, she said that the spirit of, uh, that the, the spirit of the father is this right here. The spirit of the father is the church of Thyatira or it's green. The spirit of the, of the it's a heart. He's the, he's, the, he's our heart. He's the circulation of the body. And that represents the father <clears throat> in, in the body. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is interesting because now I'm going back to the tree of going back to the, the garden of Eden where the fall of man occurred. And she hasn't, she has something, she's got something there because what I'm thinking here, when this situation between Adam and Eve happened, there are two trees involved in chapter three. There are two trees. And although we don't hear about the, 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 the tree of life until the end of the chapter, <clears throat> We don't even know it's there. Lord doesn't even mention it until the end of chapter three. <clears throat> but this is a tale of two trees. Eve becomes a Jezebel after she eats the fruit. Now, like I said before, her desire for food was not wrong. Her desire for knowledge is not wrong because God says, oh, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. With her desire for wisdom is not wrong. This is what she says. When when the the snake is the um, beguiling Eve, he's beguiling her. She she's gullible. Beguile, gull. She's got she's gullible. Okay, the woman is gullible. She'll be believe whoever if it sounds right, sounds good. But she's looking for something. She's looking for knowledge. She's looking for wisdom. She's looking for food. She's looking for. She likes pretty things. And those things are not wrong in themselves. But she went to the wrong source and she believed the wrong person. She she fell out of favor because she went outside of her marriage. She didn't go to her husband for these things. She went to the serpent. She went to this tree. Also, uh, she could have gone to God. She could have spoken to him in the evening and said, I really want I want some more knowledge. I want I want to improve my mind. I want to understand more about the universe. I want to know more about this, what, what this is all about. Why are we here? What's the purpose of our life? What is going on? So there was nothing wrong with those things. In fact, if you read the book of uh, Proverbs, it talks about how do you find a good wife? And you have the spirit of, of this, this, this feminine spirit called the spirit of wisdom who's crying out in the streets for anyone who will listen. Of course, that represents the Holy Spirit. And she's rep she's rep she's talking about how she's that she her wisdom is above rubies. The whole the spirit of wisdom is compared to rubies. And then the end of the book of Proverbs, you read that it talks about how the good woman is compared to being above rubies. So wisdom is represented by rubies. Okay, so what Eve was looking for was not wrong. She went to the wrong source for it. So that's the problem. Okay. So um, this is what it says in uh, verse six of chapter three of Genesis. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the trees to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and also gave to her husband and he did eat. Now, this is interesting because she became a Jezebel after she ate the fruit and she gave the fruit to her husband because up to that point, she probably was already feeding her husband and she'd pick up food, pick up, because this is what women do, you know, you gather the food and then bring it to their families. Here's what's what called grocery shopping today. You go grocery shopping and we prepare the food and we give it to our families. That's what women do. So what she did was not unnatural, but she became a Jezebel when she ate something that was sacrificed to idols. That was a an evil thing for her to do because she took something that she knew she shouldn't have eaten and she gave it to her husband to eat. Okay, so she became a Jezebel at that moment. That spirit of Jezebel got lodged in her stomach. Lodged in her stomach. And she gave it to her husband and he did eat. Okay, so that's when the problem started. 
Okay, now what happens next is they make fig leaves for themselves to cover up their sins and their nudity. Um, and then God curses them. He curses the woman, her ability to have children, and also um, gave her pain and sorrow. And then also the um, her desire shall be to her husband and he shall rule over you. So her desire was what? To overcome the spirit of the, of the masculine spirit here. The spirit of the father. Here she is here. The Jezebel spirit wants to feed falsehoods in order to overcome this spirit of the father. Thanks, Catherine. This work actually makes sense. So she's trying to overcome. In the movie Divergent, we see the Jezebel spirit coming up with all kinds of concoctions and serums and control devices in order to control the people and also particularly to try to overcome this group of people the civil servants she wants to control and have power she wants to be the one in control this is the one that controls society this spirit here the spirit of the father controls society in the movie divergent it makes sense so the jezebel comes from his, this this group here but she's coming up with all kinds of concoctions and things for them the people to to, to shoot up people with injections and vaccines in order to control the minds and hearts of the people in order to take power. Isn't that interesting? But this is also interesting. This is now, I can, I can say that, that that's true. That the spirit of Adam is this. That's why men want power. That's why they desire power. Is because this is the heart of the power. It's the power source right here. And Adam, he said unto him, because the house hearkened to the voice of thy wife, what did he do? He listened to the Jezebel. He listened to that Jezebel spirit and had eaten of the tree, which I commanded thou, saying, thou shalt not eat it. Cursed be the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So he, he's saying, now you're going to be, your work is going to be hindered. Because you listened to the Jezebel, she wasn't Jezebel before she ate the fruit. She was Jezebel after she ate the fruit. Because you listened to the Jezebel, your work, which is the works church here, your work is going to be hindered. Thorns and thistles shall bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field. And in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return to the ground, for out of it thou wast taken, for thus thou art unto dust shall thou return. So isn't this interesting? So Adam's work is hindered. Eve wants to take control. Eve wants the power. So because she's become a Jezebel. And so she's feeding him bad food. And he's eating it. And his, his work is hindered as a result of it. Now, going on through the the rest of the chapter, we go to the end of the chapter and we find out God kicks them out of the garden for their own good because there's another tree there. A tree that they didn't notice. A tree they didn't know was there. A tree that was perhaps humble in appearance, but it also was a food source. It was a source of food. And God says, we have to because they become like one of us. And the Lord God said, behold, the man is become as one of us. To know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and placed at his, the east of the garden, uh, garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every which way to keep the way of the tree of life. There was two trees in this garden. We didn't know about the second tree. We didn't know it was there. We knew about the tree of knowledge of good and evil in the second chapter or whatever. But we, this, is the, this is the chapter about two trees. He tells them about this, this the first, the, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. In Genesis 2.17. And it's in chapter 3 that we don't find out that there's a second tree. 
this is this is the tree. This is all about two trees. The tree when the pagans celebrate is the the fall of man when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's at Christmas time, the darkest time of the year. Isn't that interesting? And yet at Christmas time, we are seeing this conjunction in the sky where Jupiter is overtaking Saturn. When Christ died on a tree, he died on a tree. He died for us. Let's see if I can find that. On a tree. Let's see if I can find that for you in just a second. Uh, Galatians 3.11 But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. For the just live by faith. The just live by faith. It's the heart of our faith. The heart of our works. The heart of, of who we are. It's the grounding, really, the life, our lifeblood is faith. And the law is not faith. Of The law is not a faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, as it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. And it goes on and talks about Abraham, uh, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Isn't that interesting? Um, and then Revelations book, book of Revelations uh, two seven. Um, this is talking about these people, the law keepers, the law keepers, um, but they have left their first love. He, and Revelation 2, 7, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the garden, of midst of the paradise of God. To eat of the tree of life. The tree of life that was in the garden. So those who overcome uh, their law, love of the law and learn to love the Lord, who Jesus Christ is the heart, our heart, the lifeblood in which we, we rely, rely on. He overcame the law. He, he uh, fulfilled the law and he died on a tree. He became the tree of life. Christ is the tree of life. And when you rely on him, he will allow you to eat at the tree of, of, of life which is in the midst of a garden, and the tree of life is eternal life forever. Now that we become like Christ, we become like God by knowing good and evil, he's going to grant us, those who eat of the tree of life, Christ Jesus, he's going to allow us to live forever because now we've been sanctified by his death on the cross. Cross, we don't have to live forever and ever by uh, with, our, with our sin, because if we had eaten of the tree of life after, uh, in the garden of Adam and Eve, Eve had eaten of the tree of life in the garden after they sinned and they hadn't been redeemed, they would have been eternally damned. Okay? Eternally damned. There would have been no redemption for them. So God did them a favor by kicking them out. But then Christ died on a tree. He died on that cursed tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if you will. And it was, he was the ultimate good. Think about that for a second. Jesus Christ, the ultimate good, the greatest good. Christ Jesus, perfect, loving, beautiful Lamb of God, dying on a tree to take away that curse of eating from that tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He was the greatest good, suffering on the greatest evil. Suffering on the greatest evil. He, That tree represented the greatest good and the greatest evil. And he nullified the sin, our sin, on that tree because he was the greatest good. And we have become so aware of how evil truly evil is and how good truly good is. How truly good God is. God is good. God is love. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. I'm, as I'm speaking, all this stuff is just popping out of my head. This is just keeps giving me all these revelations. That's why it, make it makes it so difficult for me. Because when I make a video, the Lord just keeps downloading things. I keep getting these inspirations. Excuse me, as I'm speaking, it gives me one answer. I, I, I intend on uh, uh, a certain topic, and then it goes on to another topic, and then another topic. Because the Lord just keeps downloading. Um, 
this is amazing. So it's the tr it's it's a tale of two trees. So getting back to what, my dream about my sister Beverly and my mother sitting in the chair saying, I know what happened to Beverly. And I said, what happened to Beverly? And then at that moment, in the second part of the Joe Biden dream, these butterflies leave my stomach. We are approaching a very special holiday. This Christmas is going to be very, very special. This is a special time. We know that this year is is unique. The Church of Philadelphia is defeating the synagogue of Satan, and we're not letting any man steal our crown. Okay, they're trying to steal our crown right now. We know we won. Righteousness has overcome the devil, has overcome evil. And they're trying to steal our crown. They're trying to gaslight us. They're trying to use witchcraftery, and it's not working. Everything that worked before is not working, and they don't know what to do. Thank God. They are com they're confounded. The synagogue of Satan is confounded. Oh, bringing back something that happened to me this week. I ordered a pizza. <laughs> yeah, you know, I know it sounds kind of weird. Uh, I ordered a pizza this week. I went down to pick it up. And uh, I like to order from this particular place because they make very, very good pizza. But there was also very, very dishonest people in this, this particular establishment. And it's not the first time this has happened to me. And I, I go to get get my pizza, you know, order a pizza and go get it. And um, the waitress or the cashier, she, I, get, I hand her a $50 bill. Okay, hand her a $50 bill. And she pulls out two fives. And she waves it in front of me. Like the, the pizza came to almost $30. That's very, very expensive for a pizza. But, you know treat now and then don't eat very often so she pulls out two fives and she waves them in front of me like this we only have we only have fives so i have to give you fives and she puts these two fives down on the on the, on the table plus a little bit of change and i stop i stop and I, she walks away and i'm thinking to myself is there something not something's not right here <laughs> it's not quite right because i'm terrible with numbers you know i just don't i can't visualize numbers i don't they don't compute in my head because I'm very, I'm a left-handed person. And uh, so I'm very right-brained. Is that right brain? Yeah, right-brained. So it means I'm, I I don't visualize numbers very well. And I'm not very good with, with letters and words. That's obvious. <clears throat> so um, anyway, I'm, but still at that point, I'm thinking something's not right. <laughs> Let me just think about this for a second. And then after a, uh, you know, a few moments of thinking about it, I said, hold on just a second. I gave you a 50. And then she goes, she stops and she goes, oh, oh, well, at least one of us can count. And she, I meant to say we didn't have any 10s. And she pulls out another $10 and she hands them to me. And uh, and I walk away and I th thought to myself, this is not, this is, this was not the first time this has happened at this particular restaurant. This is quite common. But what caught my attention was this waving around this hocus pocus thing. She she was waving she like someone waving a wand. She was waving this money at me, and she what she was trying to do was distract me. But it was a it's a witchcraftery thing, and I didn't even occur to me till after when she was doing it. But after when I thought about it, I thought this that's what they do. They wave a wand in front of you. They distract you. They move. They do some kind of funny hand movement. I've seen that. Um, so who was it now? There was a somebody. Um, Somebody in Hillary Clinton's group, Podesta, 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 he would do that little hand thing when he was trying to bamboozle you with a lie or deception. He would wave his hand at you or do something with hand. It was to distract him. It was a witchcraft, a little witchcraft tool that they, they do. But the whole idea is to get you your mind off of what's in front of you. Okay, it's it's to bamboozle. It's a witchcraft little tool that they do, and I'm thinking this is what they this is what they don't understand. This is what they these these people who are trying to steal our crown. They they're they got these false prophets who are waving their hands and waving their little wands at us, but what's happening is it's not working anymore, and they can't figure it out. They don't understand why it's not working. It always worked in the past. Why? Because we had that seed of Satan stuck in our stomach. 
we were bamboozled. We were mind controlled. We were mind altered. So we couldn't see the little witchcrafty things that they did to control our minds and our thinking. It's not working this time. And they are, they are confounded because it always worked in the past, but it's not working now. Why? Because we're wised up. Our eyes are open. Our head, our eye, or we got clear vision. Our stomach is no longer got the seed of Satan stuck in it. That's what that dream was about. When I felt the butterflies leave, the butterflies twice in that dream, the butterflies left my stomach. And she, they meant in the dream, my mother mentions Beverly, who represents this in my dreams. I know what happened to Beverly. Go to the movie Divergent. You see that the Jezebel spirit is trying to control us through witchcraftery and vaccines and all the rest of the stuff, which is why they're so anxious to get a vaccine on us because they're trying, they've been vaccinating us. Oh, which brings me to this other thing that has happened. Okay, so this other thing has happened. <clears throat> I was watching a television program. I hadn't seen this in years and years and years. I, for some reason, this program was on television. <clears throat> And it came out in the early, uh, late 60s, late 60s. And I think I must have seen some episodes of it when I was a kid. I didn't understand it. I mean, it was about alien invasions. And in fact, in fact, it was called The Invaders. The Invaders, that was the name of the show. And I hadn't seen it in years. Years and years since the 60s. And uh, so anyway, um, I was in the middle of the night. I think it was about 3 o'clock in the morning or something. This movie, this show was on. Uh, and I, I watched it. And it was interesting. I'll, I'll tell you, this was really interesting. It's about um, these alien invaders, invaders that come down to the earth and they they plan to take over the earth and they, they, they have infiltrated every area of, of our life. We don't know who the invaders are because they appear to be human, but they're not human. Okay. And they want to kill humanity. That's their ultimate goal. Okay. is to kill humanity and take over the earth. Sound familiar? So in this dream, I mean, in this dream, in this show, they have um, this one particular show. It was about, I can't remember the name of the, the lead guy, but it doesn't really matter. He, he's trying to get these aliens off the planet by, uh, anyway, they do this mind control thing. These aliens have this little whirly thing. This woman holds this little whirly doorly thing that helps, that takes control of your mind. And makes you kind of like a zombie and you forget what's going on. It's like a mind control device. Okay. But what caught my attention, particularly in this episode that I was watching, where there were two names of streets that came up. This is going to blow your mind. So the first road that came up was Old Mill Road. Old Mill Road. Old Milled Road. Old Milled Old. Milled, old Old, old mill road, road came up, okay? And they, this guy goes to this, it's, it's mentioned several times, you see this old mill road, old mill road. I don't know why I can't say that, but anyway. Um, but why that's interesting to me, I looked up old mill road, there was a, there was a couple of references, a three or four year references to it. But what caught my attention particularly, because I was thinking to myself, why does that seem familiar to me? Why does Old Mill Road seem familiar to me? Why do I know that? Um, there's an Old Mill Road in Toronto. Okay, when I looked it up, I found out there was an Old Mill Road in Toronto. Now, that doesn't seem like much, except for the fact that I've been having lots of dreams about Toronto lately. Dream after dream, I, I haven't told you about this, but I, sometimes I see it as a skyscrape, sky skyline. Sometimes I see a map. Sometimes I see just the airport. Sometimes I see, see that I see Toronto is popping up a lot in my in my dreams and my visions. I see Toronto a lot. And when I looked up the this uh, road, Old Mill Road, there's an Old Mill Road in Toronto. Now, I must have known that. But something is, is popping. So I don't know what the connection is exactly. But I'm having a lot of dreams about Toronto. I've had several. Okay. I've just not mentioned it because I didn't know what the correlation was. And I still don't. Except that this there's an old mill road in Toronto. Now there might be a connection there. I'm just saying. 
But the next thing that was interesting, there was a second road that was mentioned in this, this show, and it's <laughs> the the road the, the the sign was clearly labeled in this like they the camera deliberately went to this road sign, and the road sign was Travistock Road. Travistock Road. Now there is no Travistock Road uh, as far as I know, but there is a Tavistock. And when I looked up Tavistock, we all should know Tavistock. Tavistock is a mind control um, institution. It's about mind control. And it's in it's in England. I think it's in London. Tavistock. So because that caught immediately caught my mind when I saw Travistock. I said Travistock. That sounds very that sounds familiar. Why do I know that? And I knew it had something to do with um, scientific uh, uh, research about human human behavior. Um, and they, they they when you look into their their research, they're really about mind control, controlling human behavior. That's what it's about. So I thought that was rather interesting. So the Lord led me to that this year, this this week. He showed me that too. So this is a very strange show called The Invaders and how these invaders have been trying to mind control us for, for decades, if not centuries, if not thousands of years. And it's about this witchcraftery that they've had over us, this waving their, their wands and human behavior and trying to control our minds and take control of us. Through their the their witch witchcraftery and their their uh, spells and incantations and their things that they that they have concocted in order to pump us full. Now, what they can't seem to understand and what they don't understand, these invaders, which are uh, fallen angels and uh, demons and all the rest of these crew and whatever else they are, some of these invaders are have inhabited human beings and uh, have taken possession of them. But some people that we think are human are actually not. They're really not human. That's what this is what is saying, and this is what I believe that this the Lord is showing me that a lot of the people that we think are human are really not human, and these all these blood sacrifices that they have to do regularly is the only thing that's keeping them keeping the the resemblance of humanity keeping them in a uh, is hiding basically hiding their inhumanity is hiding their true motives is hiding their true image of what they really are inhuman and non-human okay people who are totally taken over by these demon entities are people who are not actually human okay and their mind control and their witchcraftry is not no longer working because our minds have, have been set free and this gets me back to what I'm saying about this dream that I had where my, my mother was sitting in this chair and I said, she said, hey, I know what happened to Beverly. And that's because they've been mind controlled. Getting back to the church of, of Pergamos, let's just go there for, back there for a second. because um, It says to the church about the church of Pergamos that they're eating a false doctrine. When it's, it has to do with eating. It has to do with eating things sacrificed to idols it has to do with um wherein my my faithful spirit uh, faithful servant antipas was martyred uh was martyred and slain among you where satan dwelleth this blood sacrifice which is the only thing that's keeping them from truly exposing themselves for what they are but because they're being de deprived of their blood sacrifice the things that they've been eating the blood the sacrifice and all the things that are keeping them to the, giving them the appearance of being human is being denied them. They're now showing their true colors. Um, doctrine. Um, when Christ is talking about doctrine, he's talking about eating my flesh. That means eating true doctrine. And he tells them that he will give them manna, um, which is give them the hidden manna, which is Christ Jesus. And it was hidden from them in the garden. That The tree of knowledge of, of good and evil was out there in the open, but the tree of life was hidden. The tree of life was hidden, and if you search for Christ, you will find him, and he will give you good food to eat. He will replace it. And it made, oh, what, what, coming back to what I was thinking about this, this show, in the show, I saw chemtrails. Back in the, it was this, this show was from 1968. I saw chemtrails in the, in the sky. So they have been, uh, in, 
they've been mind controlling us for a long, long time. They have been mind controlling us and changing our food, changing our water, changing, trying to chloroform the earth with all this crap. And it was hidden from us, all the things that they've been doing. And they're still chemtrailing the air. And they, but they, like I said, they can't figure out what, why we're not being fooled anymore. That's because the spirit of freedom, the Holy Spirit, is keeping our minds from their, their deceptions. And is waking us up so that we're no longer deceivable with their little witchcraftery that they do to try to deceive us. And they, they're bamboozled. They don't know what to do. They, they're bamboozled. The word is... I'm looking for they're they're bewildered. They're they're the ones that are going like what? I don't understand. It worked before, yeah, it worked before, but it's not working anymore because the Lord is setting us, it's going to setting us free from that fruit that we ate that tainted our bodies. He's removing that Jezebel spirit and that from our 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 minds and our 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 thought so that we're no longer mind controlled by their little devices, the 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 chemtrails in the air and the vaccines that they pumped us full of. And it's not working anymore, and they can't figure it out. They they think, oh, it always worked. It always worked. But now it's not working, and they're they're false prophets all over the te television and all their things. We're seeing things that we never saw before because our eyes are open. We're seeing them for what they really are. All sparkle and no substance, and evil deceptions, and lies and lies and horrible things that these people are up to. So there's that. And I thought that was really, really fascinating. So, um, anyway, well, there was something else I wanted to say before I, I, I finish this. So this Christmas, and like I said, go back to the, um, go to that video I was telling you about Kim Clement letter. You want to hear Trey Smith. That's the name of his channel, Trey Smith. Um, really, really fascinating prophetic word. Very, very encouraging that we are, we're going to be having going through a Christmas, and I think it's this Christmas. It's this Christmas, people, because it's the only one that makes sense because we are, and 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 the word Christmas itself, and like I said, this is a tale of two trees because if you think about it, that tree in the garden when we ate of the knowledge of tree of knowledge of good and evil, had that's where it started. That's where it started, and in most in my dreams, twice the Lord set me free from this butterfly that were in my stomach twice and that's a sign that he was setting us free my perfect love was going to protect us through this time that's why he showed me in that dream the spirit of perfect love was going to protect us from this onslaught of evil and witchcraftry that we have been under and that they were going to try to steal and kill us through this this process but god was going to protect us through it okay and that. Also, my sister Beverly was mentioned, who represents this church. And I was set free from butterflies, from these the spirit that was in my stomach. This church is being set free. The church of the civil servants, the church of presidents and prime ministers, they're going to be set free. But the Lord is also working on this church. And, uh, yeah, isn't that amazing? And it's at Christmas time, the only holiday that has Christ's name on it. Think about that for a second. Isn't that amazing? Even though it's a pagan holiday, it's the only holiday we celebrate that has the name of Christ on it. Pentecost doesn't, Passover doesn't, even want to call it Easter, East, Easter doesn't. It's Christmas, Christmas. And when I hear Christmas songs, oh, my heart just... Oh, racist when just exalts. I'm so excited. I don't like Santa Claus songs, but I love Christmas songs. I love listening to the Messiah. I love listening to all that stuff. When Christ was sent out into the world. And that's what, like I said, when Messa, I don't know if I mentioned it in this video or the last video, because I'm getting a little mixed up from what I said in my last video compared to this one. Uh, when I looked up mass, Christ's mass, uh, it comes from the Latin word Missa, M-I-S-S-A, Missa. And it was, uh, a mass was done in order to send the people out, to dismiss the people, to send them out. And Christ, to send out Christ, to dismiss or to end all things with Christ, to send it out with, send the people out with the blessing of Jesus Christ and his anointing. 
And it's the only holiday, even though it's a pagan holiday, that has Christ's name on it. Christ is going to take Christ Christmas for his own. He's already taken possession of it because of what he did on the cross. He is the tree of life. They, the pagans celebrate the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We celebrate the tree of life. And the tree of life has set us free from the knowledge of good and evil. He has set us free from that curse because he took the curse for us. The ultimate good take, took the curse of the ultimate evil by becoming the tree of life for us on our behalf. He is our tree of life. He is the victory. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And he has become that tree for us. And we, we take part of his, of who he is. He is the hidden manna. And we participate in the hidden manna. The Eucharist, actually a mass, um, represents the Eucharist in, the, in this church. We call it the Lord's Supper, but they call it Eucharist. Okay? And Christ is that hidden bread. The, the thing that's been hidden from these people in this particular church, the Church of Pergamos, is Christ. There's a lot of people who love the Lord, but they've been taught to, to, to pray and sacrifice to idols. A lot of them. And Christ has been hidden. And he is the hidden manna that they take in their Eucharist. He is the hidden manna. And those who are faithful will... Uh, the Lord says he will give them the hidden manna, which is him. He himself is the true doctrine. He is the manna. He is the bread. When he says, eat of my body, eat of my, drink of my, my, uh, my, my blood. He's talking about taking in the truth. He is true doctrine. He is the hidden manna. Okay. So that's it. Again, it's very interesting. It's about food and it's getting stuck. And it's, it's in the seat of Satan, which is in the stomach for the woman. It's for the woman, it's the stomach. For the for the man, it's the heart. So interesting. Um, <clears throat> so as we approach this new this Christmas, this is going to be a holiday in which Jupiter overtakes Saturn, and this holiday Christmas will no longer be a pagan holiday. It will be a holiday of for for Christ and Christ alone. Um, he is our tree of life, and we give him our heart. And uh, this is a new season we're living in. We're, we're not going to allow Satan to steal our crown. It's not happening anymore. We are wised up to them. And greater is he that is in us than he that is, that's in the world. And, and the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And we have the gates trying to overcome the church through their witchcraftry. The gates, if you know what I'm talking about, trying to overcome us through their witchcraft and their vaccines, and it's just not going to work because the spirit of freedom and the spirit of life is in us, and it cannot be overcome. The spirit of freedom cannot be overcome, and I think these invaders who've come into the world are, are shocked because they've tried so hard to overcome the spirit of God through so many different means and methods and witchcraftry and schemes, and they just can't do it because the spirit of God is so strong and so perfect and so overcome you can't overcome it you can't overcome the spirit of god it's just impossible and uh, they're being defeated and they're being thrown down praise the lord so this christmas is going to be special the beef should be very interesting to see we've got a couple of weeks to it and i think we're seeing it already all these interesting things that are happening 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 anyway i hope you got something from this video i hope that you understood what i'm saying that the word that I, the lord gave me is um, prepare your hearts for freedom. Prepare your hearts for Nassar Jassara, whatever that means. Prepare your hearts for freedom that this Christmas is going to be very, very special. Um, there are a lot of things that the Lord is showing me that these these all all connected. Um, I don't know what, what has to do with Toronto because like, there's something going on in Toronto, something the Lord wants to show us what Toronto, Travistock, Tavistock, that, that uh, shows Tavistock. Maybe they're going to be invaded. Maybe the Lord's going to do something about Tavistock and that there was going to be something in the news about it. I don't know. But, um, yeah. So keep your eyes open. 
we're living in great and interesting times. Something's good. It's like a tale of two cities. The tale of two cities, the tale of two trees. It's the best of times. The worst. Of, it was the worst of times. <laughs> I think that's how it started. The tale of two cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Pretty sure. So we're living in the tale of two trees. A tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. So which, which one are you going to eat from? You've already eaten from one. Now it's time to eat from the other. His name is Jesus Christ. And his name is all over this holiday. Okay? So God bless. And I'll talk to you later.